a.m. version of Unity. Good job. I appreciate your awareness and your awakeness and your alertness at 10.30 a.m. I am Reverend Marla Mason, and it's a blessing and a pleasure for me to serve as your minister this morning and every day of my life. I am reading from our new book of the month, In the Flow of Life, by the beloved Eric Butterworth, on page 12. And I just want to point out, this was our reading way back on January 27th this year. But it was such a good fit with the theme, I just had to read it again. Are you ready? The great truth taught by the mystics of all ages is, life is lived from within out. This means that the whole universe is concentrated at the point where you are. More than this, you are the universe expressing as you. You are its living enterprise. It forever stands behind you with its full resources. However, the fullness of this universal support comes through you, not just to you. The most profound knowledge that you can attain is that your whole existence flows inexorably from a universal process, which is always from within out. How widespread and deep-seated is the belief that we are forever in competition with people and in conflict with the world. Our fears, resentment, anger, even grief come because we feel that the instability of life in the world is a threat to our existence. Jesus gave us the answer. The kingdom of God is within you. What is this mystical kingdom? It is the focus of the universe upon and the flow of the universe within humankind. This is made unmistakably clear, as Jesus said, it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. In other words, there is a longing at the heart of the universe to flow forth into and to perfect all that has been created. The kingdom within is the realm of all potentiality, all substance, all life, all love, all peace. Jesus taught, do not be anxious about your life, but seek first the kingdom. All shall be yours as well. In other words, get into the flow and you will receive all you desire or need. And so it is. I'm going to read through today's affirmation once, and then I'll invite you to join me. Alive with passion and purpose, I boldly live in the spirit of abundance, aligned with the flow of life, effortlessly expressing my gifts. I give and receive freely, growing my gifts and growing in God, and so it is. Please stand and join me with conviction. Alive with passion and purpose. I boldly live in the spirit of abundance, aligned with the flow of life, effortlessly expressing my gifts. I give and receive freely, growing my gifts and growing in God, and so it is. Becca, everybody, you guys are amazing. And I'm feeling inspired, how about you? Two women were stranded on a desert island. No food, no water. One of them's pacing around, worrying and fretting, and the other's languishing on the beach in the sun. And the first woman says, Aren't you afraid we're going to die? And the second woman says, You know, I make a million a year, and I tithe 10% to my church. My minister's going to find me. <laughs> I will find you. <laughs> and I'll find you whether you make a million a year, whether you make 5,000 a year, whether you make 500 a year. If you make 50 bucks a year, I'm going to find you. Because what you do is you give me a reason to do what I do. 
Your being in this room allows me to serve my purpose on planet Earth. And my purpose on planet Earth is to minister the Word of God such that you are lifted and inspired and transformed by the power of spiritual principle. you so I can do that I didn't have to look very hard this morning thank you because here you are unity of Bellevue exists to serve we exist to transform and awaken individuals we exist to transform lives and to make the world a better place to transform the world our vision our mission is big The reason we're here is big. Our purpose is big. And we cannot do it without you. Me preaching to an empty room does not make sense, right? Right. Right. I mean, it might be kind of fun. I might enjoy it. I'm going to give a great sermon this morning. Wait a minute. But there's no purpose to it. I need you. Unity needs you. We exist to serve you. And one of the things that I know about you is just like the woman stranded on the desert island, you know that it costs money to change the world. And you support us in so many beautiful and brilliant ways. We are a prosperous and thriving center. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. For being the place where I can show up and do my purpose in the world. And for being the place that is investing in awakening individual lives and transforming the world. It is a worthy investment, isn't it? So it's October, and every year in October, we proceed with what is called Stewardship Month. This is the time of year that we ask you into uh, 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 a commitment to stewardship, to steward our community, to care for unity you see a steward according to the dictionary is one who manages the property and or affairs of another do you know you know we like to think my church our church this ain't our church this is god's church everything that you see in this building every person every item everything that you see is an expression of the divine. It belongs to the divine, and we are channels through which that divinity flows. That's it. We are just channels through which the perfection and the allness of God can flow. And we are stewards of this spiritual community because it actually belongs to God. It is our job to manage its affairs. And you have appointed me your leader. And I'm so grateful Sometimes, not so much. (laughs) But 98% of the time, (laughs) super duper grateful. (laughs) Because you have empowered me to stand witness to your growth and your transformation and to provide the infrastructure, the operations, the business side of things, to provide that to you so that you can be transformed. How cool is that? I'm honored. It really is an honor and a blessing when I say that on Sunday mornings. I mean it. It is an honor, a blessing, a privilege to serve as your minister. I'm so grateful that I get to live my life purpose here. And I need you. And I'm going to find you so that I can do what God would have me do. Thank you for saying yes so far. So we are all stewards of something that belongs to the infinite. We are given its temporary care. Let's be about it with a sense of consciousness and commitment. Our theme for stewardship this year is the gifts I bring. Because as I thought about it and I prayed on what do I want stewardship to mean for this community this year? What does spirit, what does the infinite mind and heart of God want stewardship to mean for this community this year? I realized, you know, we've, we've often talked about stewardship only in terms of money. 
And yeah, money is super important. We gotta have it. We live in a world of money, and in order for us to have an, an, orga to have an organization, we have to have money. And yet, there's more that completes the picture, isn't there? And as I prayed and pondered and meditated and thought on what really does complete the picture, what came to me are four ways, four gifts we bring to unity and to the world that support us in growing the kind of community that really can awaken people to their spiritual nature and transform the world. And those gifts are first your presence. You're in the room, right? I said, if you're not here, I'm preaching to an empty room. And there really is no purpose to that, right? So your presence is critical here, just showing up. And that's going to be our focus for today. Before we focus on that, though, let me tell you what the other three are so you know what to look forward to the rest of the month. The second gift that you already bring to unity are your prayers. Your prayer. And if you're not praying for unity on a regular basis, that's okay, we're going to fix that next Sunday. Ready? So gear up, be here. I'm even going to give you a prayer you can pray if you don't have one of your own. The third gift that you bring to our community is your participation, which is distinct from showing up, right? You can show up and be a lump in a chair. That's all I need. Give me a lump in a chair, I can work with that. Okay? Your participation is your yes. Your participation is, I'm going to show up. I'm going to volunteer. I'm going to come to events. I'm going to be Unity Takes in the Arts. I'm going to take a class. I'm going to go to a workshop. I'm going to join a group. I'm going to do something beyond show up. And then finally, finally, the final piece, you bring the gift of your prosperity. And I don't care if you're 500 a year, 5,000 a year, or a million a year. You are prosperous. You have all the blessing that is required for you to bless this community with your financial support. And we'll talk more about that in week four. So those are the four gifts I know you already bring to Unity of Bellevue, your presence, your prayers, your participation, and your prosperity. Let's take a little bit deeper dive with what do I mean by your presence? You show up. You are in the room. You are fulfilling at least some part of your bargain by being in the room. Without you, I have no one to minister to. Our staff has no one to minister to. Our prayer chaplains, our board of trustees has no one to serve. Thank you for showing up so that we can fulfill our mission, so that we can fulfill our purpose of waking you up. And if you think you're awake, maybe you are, but there's always more to wake up to, right? I just want to, as a little aside, I went on retreat last week. I went to a minister's retreat. And you know, you go on retreat to work something out, right? <laughs> the first night of the retreat, like this whole old thing that I didn't even know was there totally came up. I was like, Oh, my word, <laughs> that's there. And I became so aware of how it's been driving my behavior. And I got to spend the next two and a half days working through it and allowing myself to be ministered to. Do you see? This organization that sponsored this retreat lived into their mission of helping me wake up. We all have more waking up to do. Get in the room, be present available and willing to wake up. And here's the thing. So many people, and I've not heard just here, 15 years in ministry, oh, I couldn't come to church, I was just too down. What? Or I couldn't come, you know, I didn't want to bring everybody down. Come on, you got to show up. You might be down, you might be going through hard times. That's what we're here for. We're here to support you in your hard times. We're here to support you in your joys, too. 
But don't let the hard times keep you away. Let us do our work. The hard times are just God's way of waking you up, right? That's all. You may as well come and do it in spiritual community. Because I promise you, you'll move through it faster because you'll feel supported and loved. And people will be here for you. So show up, up or down. You know, show up whether you're in or out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm in. I'm in the teaching. I'm in. I'm committed. I'm into the community. I'm in. Eh, I'm not so sure if I'm in. Maybe I'm not in. Might be in. Not sure. Might be willing to be in. Not quite sure. Show up until you know. And you know, I kind of think the universe is a big yes until it's a clear no. Got that? It's a big yes. It is always a yes. Show up. Participate. Practice. Until there's a clear no. This is no longer right for me and there is no question about it. So up or down, in or sort of in, in or not sure you're in, important to show up. You see, you cannot be transformed if you're not in the room. If you're not willing to stand in line at the banquet table and fill up your plate, you're going to go hungry. I like a good buffet myself. Show up. Be findable. You're not stuck on a desert island. Be findable. Something happened this morning. I was walking through the sanctuary and someone was in tears. Now that person could have been crying at home by themselves. But I was able to stop and check in and comfort because that person showed up. And if I hadn't been here, someone else would have done it because that's what we're here for, right? So show up. And show up with an intention. Show up with a certain quality of consciousness. Show up in a way that is conscious. What in the heck does that mean? Yeah, we throw that word around a lot, don't we? We talk about consciousness a lot. What does it mean to be conscious? If you look it up in the dictionary, if you're conscious, you're aware. How much do you show up in your life like completely unaware? You're just... Show up with a quality, with an intention of awareness. Now, consciousness is a really interesting thing to me. I love to think about consciousness. Did you hear what I just said? One must be conscious to think about consciousness. I like to think of myself as fairly awake, relatively, I don't know, maybe not, I guess. Maybe not, but maybe. But do you see, what we teach and what we believe is that the universe is one big consciousness. What we teach is that the manifest universe is the mind and the body of God. What we teach is that there is something behind all of this material appearance that is mind, that is energy, that is consciousness. Now, it's a really interesting thing. Where did that consciousness come from? Because that consciousness had to be aware of itself in order to be conscious too. I love asking those kinds of questions of my teachers. <laughs> but do you see, for us to become conscious is to align with that infinite consciousness. That's what we did in our meditation service this morning. We practiced aligning with the infinite consciousness, opening our mini-minds or our individual emanations of the one consciousness to the infinite consciousness. that can only be aware of itself because it's conscious. And so I invite you to show up with a certain consciousness, a certain way of being, a consciousness of willingness, a consciousness of awakening, a consciousness of, 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 of presence. Not, I'm going to be present, little p, 
but presence, capital P, God, presence. I expand and I open my mind and heart to the infinite mind and heart of God, recognizing that we are at one, for I am an expression of it, and I show up with that intention. Except on the days I can't, and then I count on the others who are showing up with that intention to support me. Because that is what community is all about. And so for our stewardship theme this month, I invite you to begin to cultivate that awareness that you are aware. That awareness that something greater than you are is knowing itself as you. And that you show up in a willingness to know it more deeply. Capital I, it. Capital I, it. To know this infinite something more deeply by your awareness to, as Eric Butterworth said, let it flow in your life. In fact, he said on page 19, he said, we are never farther from the healing flow than our consent to let it unfold. Give your consent to open your mind and heart to that flow because the only thing in the way of the flow is you is your idea that it's not available to you. The only thing in the way of the flow is your idea that you can't have it, is your idea that you can't know God. The only thing between you and your good, as Emma Curtis Hopkins says, is an idea. Give way to the flow with your willingness to be in a certain state of mind. Open, awake, alert, aware, I am here to be a blessing. I am here to bless. I am here to be blessed. I show up in a certain frame of mind, open, willing, loving, kind, anchored in the perfection from which I spring. Willing to be found. I once was lost, but now I'm found. No more. No more. I will find you. Not because of what you already bring, but because of your potential to be more. Because of your potential to bring more, to express more, to give more. We cannot be successful in our individual lives until we are willing to support the success of others. How many of you want to be successful? (laughs) Me too. Truly, we must be that which we seek. I want to be successful. I want to lead a successful, thriving, dynamic, happy, spiritual community. And in order for that to happen, I must see to the success of each one of you, to the success of our neighbors at the Lutheran Church next door, to the success of my community, to the success of everyone. I must approach life with a certain consciousness. I must show up (coughs) alert, awake, aware, and willing. Shall we practice that together? I invite you to bring your attention to your breath as we seal this message. As we anchor in the awareness that we bring many gifts, as we anchor in the awareness that we have purpose right here on planet Earth, that we are here for a reason, And that as we allow the perfection, the infinite name and nature of God to flow through us and as us, more and more is revealed. Breathing deeply. Simply allow your mind and your heart to open more fully than they ever have before. Unzip (laughs) whatever it is that is covering up the heart of you, the beingness of you. As you open and say yes to a greater consciousness, a greater awareness of who and whose you are, 
as you say yes to the opportunity to awaken more fully, as you say yes to the opportunity to show up in a certain state of mind, and you feel your heart expand, you feel your mind expand, and you recognize there is only one mind There is only one heart. This is God's mind. This is God's heart. This is my heart now. And in this consciousness of unity right now, I invite you to ask yourself, how am I called to show up? How am I called to be present to life? How am I called to be present here in my spiritual community? And you simply allow the awareness to flow for you are in the flow of life. You are in the flow of the infinite mind. As you ask yourself, what am I to be? in this divine expression of God that I am living right now. And you know that God's mind is your mind. God's heart is your heart. As you own a resounding yes, a resounding yes to what it is you are to be, how it is you are called to show up, simply say yes. And know that you are supported on the journey, that God calls us to that which we are to be and do and always supports its expression. Know that all that is required for you to be all that God would have you be has already been provided by the power of your yes. Simply say yes to the beingness and to its provision. And so I give thanks. I give thanks for the awakening that has taken place here today. I give thanks for those who have been found. I give thanks for the wisdom that that flows as each and every one of us. I give thanks for the expanding consciousness that is our spiritual center. And so I close this message with a grateful heart simply saying yes to all that is about to unfold. And so it is. Amen.